Je, do you really want me to think critically about being green or do you just want me to follow your commands? Je, how serious are you about critical thinking? Je, how willing are you, are you to entertain the other side of the argument, especially when facts are presented to you in full context? My name is Fierce Wing Chun and I'm here to deliver three methods to challenge your teacher this coming school year 2023. And if you want to see more video like this, be sure to give a thumbs up. Source are at the description below. And as a bonus, I'll share with you who I follow in this energy humanist movement to craft out such arguments and everything is in the description below. First of all, when your teacher confronts you with the claims like we need to protect the environment in order to protect human lives, uh, without the environment there will be no humans, or even better, human lives are dependent on the environment, therefore we should protect the environment. Really? We have to ask, really? We need to identify that these uh, are sweeping claims predicated on half-truths. Yes, everything we enjoy today came from the environment. But while it's true that all of our material comfort need raw inputs from the environment, but the environment is not the driving force for human comfort. Rather, uh, it's human ingenuity that is the driving force of material comfort. The caveman can have all the oil, all the natural gas in his cave, all the iron ore, all the silica, all the lithium, but he has none of the material comforts we have today. Yes, we added 100 ppm of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere over the last 200 years. But who would want to turn back time and go back to 200 years before? Life expectancy was 30 years. Child mortality rate was very high compared to today's standard. We did not have horsepower. We needed to use horses. We did not have stove. We needed to use wood. And that was how people died of uh, pollution, indoor pollution, because particulate matter went into the lungs of people. And, and 200 years ago, we did not have medicine, advanced medicine. We did not have social media. No teacher should advocate for regressive civilization, grooming students to advocate for primitivism. Environmentalists want to reduce humanity down to primitivism in the name of protecting the environment. They do not really care about human progress, nor do they care about how much the environment has improved over the last 30, 50 or 100 years. Sure, if you really consider yourself an environmentalist, if you really have a good reason to tell us that humanity should live according to the standards of living 200 years ago, you should really tell us why. Secondly, if it's resource conservation that you're concerned about, then you should know about the Simon Abundance Index. According to the Simon Abundance Index, we are 0.9% more abundant in resource for every 1% increase in population since 1970. Yes, this is because each human being added to the world is not just a hungry mouth to feed. Each human being added to the world means a pair of hands and a new set of brain to create more resources. Most people came into this life with zero in their bank account and they die with money in the bank. That means that they produce more goods and services uh, than they consume throughout their lifetime as a human being. So as long as people are not oppressed, people can make resources. As long as environmentalists the environmentalist movement do not succeed in stopping fossil fuels, then we are already on our way to super abundance. I highly recommend reading Julian Simon's Ultimate Resource 1 and 2 and check out the Simon Abundance Index. Details are in the description box below. Third teacher, do you want your students to be irresponsible? If you do, then you should convert each and every one of the students into an environmentalist. This is because the environmentalist movement is the most irresponsible social political movement in the modern day. Don't be fooled when they pretend that they are the ones taking the precautionary measure when they say better to be safe than sorry. It's a pathetic excuse for being imprecise, non-accurate and wrong. The number one way to be responsible as an environmentalist is to own up to your past predictions as an environmentalist. When you raise the alarm in the past, you have to own up to it. 
And when em- and, and environmentalists never ever do that. Instead, they act like they've never been so vindicated when their past predictions are completely wrong. Since the beginning of the movement, they came up with numerous catastrophic predictions ever since the very first Earth Day. So let me give you some examples. It's already too late to avoid mass starvation, said the first Earth Day organizer, Dennis Hayes, on 22nd April 1970. Or let me give you another one. Civilization will end within 15 or 30 years unless immediate action is taken against problems facing mankind, said George Well, a Harvard biologist in 1970. Does that sound familiar to you? Unless immediate action is taken against problems facing mankind. Immediate action. Let me give you the best one. We must realize that unless we are extremely lucky, everybody will disappear in a cloud of blue steam in 20 years said Paul Ehrlich, the father of modern environmentalist movement in 1969. He's still alive today. He's still non-repentant about being 180 degrees wrong and still leading the environmentalist movement today. There are 100 more completely wrong predictions by the environmentalist movement in the link below. So cheer, if you live through the 70s, if you live through the 80s, if you live through the 90s, if you live through the 2000s, if you live through the 2010s, and when climate catastrophe did not realize, then it's very irresponsible to dig in your heels and double down in echoing the same kind of climate predictions again. So, Jer, if you're an environmentalist, let me suggest to you how to be responsible. The responsible thing to do when you're 180 degrees wrong about prediction is to own up. Explain to the world why you're wrong. Tell the world what steps you have taken to correct the models before coming up with new predictions. You do not need to have a degree to be responsible. It's very simple. Respect other people's intelligence. And it all boils down to this. Why should we believe in your predictions about the future when you don't even acknowledge the present and the past? Lastly, Chia, do you want your students to become climate protesters? Climate protesters glue themselves to paintings and expect security guards to bring them food and party. They block traffic, they destroy museums, they destroy monuments to just to send a message. Are you saying you're fundamentally in the same camp with them? We study hard so that we can get a job. We get a job so that we can earn, we spend, we consume, we invest, we grow, we start a family. Environmentalists don't like us to earn. Environmentalists don't like us to consume. Environmentalists don't like us to invest. Environmentalists don't like us to grow. Environmentalists don't like us to start a family. Environmentalists do not like humans to succeed either as a human race or individually. Climate activism is nowhere close to being an ideal role model for students. So, Chia, if you want to, your, your students to be responsible, then you would not want your students to echo the same type of climate catastrophe and ignore past failed prediction. Nor do you want them to become climate activists. Subscribe to this channel. Also, join my Telegram group where I deposit a whole ton of resources that rebuild the environmentalists. I'm always on open invitation to debate any environmentalist group in Singapore, be it the SG Climate Rally, Green Nudge, Singapore Youth for Climate Action, Climate Conversation, Fossil Free NUS, World Wildlife Fund Singapore, Center for Responsible Future, Nature Society Singapore, Mother Earth Toastmaster Club, just bring it. YouTube, I need you to help me to ask them to bring it so uh, youtube i need you your help to gather enough momentum to make this happen and when it happens i promise i'll upload the debate online for your viewing pleasure most importantly join this new movement to fight for humanity show the environmentalists that they are not factually correct they are more, not morally superior and that we are too big and too smart to be bullied